Well, we made it. We made it to the end. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for sticking with us. We have a special treat for you coming up now. Uh, Juan Miguel Arazola will be giving us a, the untold story of, of Penny Lane. He, he has put a comedy show in, in brackets. I think it should potentially be in air quotes. We haven't quite figured <laughs> out if Juan Miguel understands Funny. humor, but, but we'll figure it out. Uh, just to give you a little background, Juan Miguel, uh, he's our head cheerleader at Xanadu. He's also our, our lead coach for the ping pong team. Uh, Two-time, very disputed champion of uh, the ping pong tournament. And he's also a senior research scientist uh, heading up a lot of the QCAM efforts at Sanity. So with that, I'll pass it off to him to tell us what really happened with uh, Penny Lane. All right. Thank you so much, Raf. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm very honored, very lucky to be giving the closing talk. Uh, we've had such amazing talks uh, in the event. And this one is maybe a lot of you know already, it's going to be a bit of a different, not a bit, it's going to be a very different uh, talk. And really, it's not a serious talk because it's not a talk. Uh, this is a party. And like many parties, the theme of this party is Penny Lane. And I'm going to be giving you a behind the scenes uh, insights into what happens in the development of Penny Lane. Uh, and also sharing some anecdotes about the history of the software and the team and the company along the way, right? As I do this, I'll also shine some light on some of the team members and share some insights and stories uh, around them. Now, the, the goal and the reason that this talk is happening right now is that I want to recreate or we want to recreate that sense of celebration that happens at the end of an event, right? So this picture that you're seeing right now, this was last year's edition, uh, or I guess the previous edition. And after everyone was done hacking and all the talks had finished and the winners were announced, we just got together, we laughed, we shared jokes, we ate, we played table tennis, I beat everyone at table tennis. It was amazing. And and th that's what we're doing right now. We're partying, we're celebrating, and we're wrapping up what's been a fantastic three days so far of the event. Uh, I'm hoping that everyone is going to be super active in chat. So this is not me speaking. This is us coming together as a community and having a blast. So let's celebrate together. But before I do so, um, I need to say something very serious, right? So I, I said this is not a serious talk but there's a serious component to this talk. I've heard a lot of very troubling and very concerning remarks. People saying things like, the talks at QHack have been great. Or QHack is awesome. The music and the 80s theme of QHack are amazing. The QHack t-shirt is so cool. And this has to stop, OK? It's completely inappropriate and wrong because the correct pronunciation is quack. <laughs> so I want everyone, and I made that mistake as well, we have to say the correct pronunciation of the event. So things like the talks at quack have been great or quack is absolutely awesome. The music and the 80s theme of quack are just amazing. The quack t-shirt, I want one of those, it's just so cool. Right, so let's just not make the mistakes of the past and let's call things by their proper name, quack. All right, so the I said that this is not a serious talk and I wanna show you that this is not a serious talk by attempting a joke, right? Now, I have a series of three jokes. I have a repertoire of three jokes, that's all I have, right? One of my jokes is the joke about Batman and the nun. And this joke is actually a bit offensive, so I can't really share it with you. The joke of the magical frog and the princess that I actually just told to Raph a few minutes ago, it's sexually explicit, so I also cannot share it with you. But I have my hamburger joke, right? And this is a joke about volume, so people with headphones, beware. So here it goes. The setting is a library. It's a quiet space for studying, for thinking, for working, right? Uh, the picture you see here, it's actually a picture of the Toronto Reference Library, just 20 minutes away from 
It's going to do HQ. Uh, I love this library. So this is the setting. We're in a library. And it's a Wednesday. It's 2 p.m. And in comes a guy who is just absolutely drunk. And he's just entering. And he's approaching the front desk. And he goes, can I have a hamburger, please? And the receptionist, you know, the librarian is like, sir, what's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? This is a library. It's a library. And the guy's like, can I have a hamburger, please? And some fries. Sir, it's a library. This is a library. And everyone's looking at him. What's wrong with this guy? Ah, and so he realizes and he approaches and says, yeah, sorry. Can I have a hamburger, please? <laughs> All right, that's the joke. Chat, what do you think? If you like it, you can use the emote vote yeah. Let me know if it's a good joke. If not, vote name. But this gives you a taste of what this party, uh, this talk is going to be like. We're here to have some fun, and you're mostly doing it at my expense, and as you'll see also at uh, Nathan's expense. The So now that I've set the stage, we're going to begin. Like I, like I said previously, I want to share some anecdotes about the history of Penny Lane. And also, and, and one way to view it is how, how Penny Lane has grown from an idea, it was just an idea at some point, to, to the way that I like to think about it, which is a thriving community. It's not just a piece of software, it, it's a community of people around uh, software, about, around quantum computing. So the journey from idea to thriving community. And before there was Penny Lane, there was Xanadu. And some people know the answer, but a lot of other people wonder where does the name come from, right? Where does Sanadu come from? And I wanted to share you a story. It won't be completely historically accurate, uh, but that's fine. We're still going to be able to do what we want to do, which is give you a, a, an insight of where the name comes from. So the story goes like this. Uh, Christian Wiedbrook, uh, the CEO and founder of Sanadu, he was visiting MIT. He had done a postdoc at MIT. And there were some people around, there was a conversation, and Peter Shore was there, right? And they started talking, and Christian just said, Yo, Peter, I'm starting a company. That, that's my impression, I suppose. <laughs> and, um, and Peter is like, well, by golly, that is splendid. And what is the name of your company? That's how I think Peter Shore speaks. And Christian just says, Xanadu, Xanadu. And Peter is like, oh, well, this is a brilliant. It's an admirable lack of Q in the name. And how wonderful to name it after the Coleridge poem. In Xanadu did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure don decree. And he started reciting the poem. And then uh, Christian's like, no, 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 no. It's Xanadu, like the Olivia Newton John song. So this company, Xanadu, is named after a song. And as you all know, this music has always been part of a theme of everything that we do. Now, in the same way that a lot of people don't know where Xanadu comes from, the name of the company, actually many people haven't heard the song. How many of you chats actually know? Raise your hands if you actually have heard this song before. In my experience, not a lot of people do. So what I thought that I could do is to actually sing you the song. So it's time for a song in the party. Now, I want everyone's appreciation for what I'm about to do because I've never in my life performed in front of an audience. I love music, but I'm very much an amateur and I can't sing. But I'm going to do this anyway, all right? So here we go. Xanadu. Never last in the world, and you 
know the song can you tell me who sung it better olivia newton john or me i think i did a pretty good job there huh for the first time performing live ever so that's where the name comes from right now that was xanadu and there's so much happening in this company right it's a quantum computing company photonics is the the building blocks of other devices and and so penny was a, a part of this and the idea of building expertise and reputation and excelling at quantum machine learning was always there from the beginning. And so there was this idea of uh, building a software library around quantum machine learning. So I'm going to start now sharing some of the stories around Penny Lane. Uh, I'll do this by making reference to the different versions, so different stages of Penny Lane, different chapters in the story will be linked roughly to different versions. Um, and as I do so, I want to tell you some stories in particular about Maria Shaw, Josh Isaac, and Nathan Cloran, right? Some little stories about them. So some personal connection as we have with some of our uh, other speakers. Now, what I'm going to do as well, Nathan's story in particular, it's not a story. It's just told by his face. So what we're going to do is we're also going to do a tour of all the different variants of facial and actual hair in Nathan's face, right? And so we're gonna start with the, what I like to call the LinkedIn profile picture, the kind of the version that you have all seen, uh, the very presentable, very professional version of Nathan. And we're gonna use his face to mark different stages of Penny Lane development, right? And his story is gonna be told by the variants of his face. So <laughs> it's gonna be great. Now, the, when when Penny Lane moved from an idea to actual work, uh, again, this may not be fully historically accurate, but the way that I remember it was the, the software team was working a lot in strawberry fields, but there's always this idea of doing software for machine learning. And and really, um, the, the first versions of this were the quantum machine learning toolbox and the first name of Penny Lane, OpenQML, right? So before there was Penny Lane, there was the quantum machine learning toolbox and OpenQML. And I remember that this was in large part pioneered by Maria Schultz, right? And I've always admired uh, Maria greatly. And personally, I view her as a rock star of the field, the rock star of quantum machine learning. So I'm going to tell you a story, something that I've shared with her, uh, but I think it's worth also sharing with all of you. And it's that I remember reading recently an interview of Maria where she was quoted saying, that she would rather give up what she does, physics and the research, than give up a place that she loves, right? And that place is South Africa and in particular Durban when she lives. And I've never had the, the privilege or the pleasure to visit Durban. Uh, so, so I wonder, right, what what's exactly is the appeal of Durban? And personally, I love the sea, uh, I love the ocean, and so, so, and I know that Maria is a surfer. She loves surfing, right? So I just searched, what is it like to surf in Durban? And it looks something amazing like this, right? This is an actual picture. And if you have the time, just go and search surfing in Durban. It looks absolutely incredible. So I can understand the appeal of finishing a work of research and coding and maybe going after work and during the weekend to surf in the beach. That's amazing, right? But from a selfish perspective, I have to say, I wish sometimes that Maria was here in Toronto with us, right? So what would surfing look like in Toronto? And this is the closest that we get to surfing in Toronto. It's not really surfing, of course. It's more like tobogganing. Uh, very, very different experience. 
Uh, a quick story, this park that you see here, it's actually just a 30 minute walk from Zenzu headquarters. In fact, the buildings that you see kind of on the, uh, I guess, right hand side are pretty much where the, where the office is at. And this is also where we take our dog to play fetch. So I understand why Maria likes to stay in South Africa and why she doesn't want to go. At least this is my version of it. So that was the beginning of Penny Lane, just an idea, right? And it was kind of clearly understood at that point that you didn't want to build something too specialized, not a toolbox for just doing the kind of things that the computation that you want, something more fundamental, right? That could build a foundation for an important overarching library. So we're gonna reach a new stage of development and with each new stage, we have a new phase uh, of Nathan. So here we go. Now you see a bit of the difference. This, I like to call this one the Movember um, because it is, I believe, just Nathan during Movember. Also, you can see the hair is a bit longer. It's a good look, a uh, very dad look, of course. Uh, and by the way, Nathan, has many talents, but I think his greatest talent is being photogenic. This guy, just every picture of him just looks incredible. I have the opposite problem. So it's a new stage of Penny Lane development. And you've seen this meme before, but there's a lot of truth to it. Namely, it's the idea of building a software library around a central concept. And that central concept is that of quantum gradients. So that's the idea, wow, quantum gradients. And at that point, um, you know, more of the efforts of the team were geared towards building this Penny Lane. That was actually Christian Whitbrook's contribution. The CEO to Penny Lane was the name, so he named it Penny Lane. Uh, and there were a lot of people that are, you know, at the time were helping us as contractors, like Wille Bergholm, Christian Gogling, and other people. But I want to give a special shout out uh, to, to Josh, who has always been... Um, one of the central developers for Penny Lane and continues to be really the person, one of the people leading the charge. And what I want to share with you is the other side of Josh's talent, which is his artistic talent. We're going to do a tour of the art of Josh Isaac. And as you'll see, he's an incredible wildlife photographer and amazing baker and a nearly professional, incredible painter and drawer. So let's take a look first at uh, his photography and just allow me to drink water. So these were pics sent by Josh from a recent um, vacation. Right? He's at, at this time in Western Australia around Perth. And can you believe these people have kangaroos on the beach? That's just absolutely amazing. And this next picture is a masterpiece. Look at that cutie pie. And by the way, I learned that in Australia, baby kangaroos are called Joey. Look at that beautiful Joey captured by the great Josh. And here's another bonus picture of Joey and his mom. So an incredibly talented photographer, but that's not the end of it. He's also absolutely amazing at baking. These are special pictures of some of his creations. Uh, this is a sourdough bread and a loaf. I've actually tasted Josh's, uh, Josh's sourdough bread. Fantastic. And I have a question for chat. Do you think that in next year's edition of Quack, we should have some of his baking and eat from some sandwiches, perhaps, from this loaf? Let us know in the chat. I think it would be fantastic. So this is one of his baking uh, creations. There's also this brioche. Like that's not easy to do, people. That's really fantastic. And this final one are donuts. I've had these ones and they are so good. They're delicious and they're decadent. A photographer, a baker, but perhaps Josh is best known besides his incredible coding skills um, as a painter, right? I'm changing the background so to give you know a better version so you can better see uh, his artwork. And probably it'll be familiar. By the way, chat, do you know what concept is being illustrated right here? What central concept around Penny Lane uh, is being shown here? You should type it in chat. So uh, this is also one of the beginning of his career as an artist, right? The, the parameter shift rule. 
And let's see how it evolved during time. After just a few iterations, and I would say he became really addicted to drawing. Uh, it really started looking much better, right? And all of you that have ever visited, which I suppose it's everyone watching this talk, visited the Penny Lane website and the tutorials, you recognize the artwork. So this was not commissioned. This was not something that we we're paying anyone to do. This is Josh, uh, for the most part, creating all the amazing artwork, right? This is a very special one. So we have a very famous book and a book that's also going to be very famous. And if you look at the blue book, again, on my right hand side, if you notice the authors, Josh is one of them, right? So we have a never before seen illustration of the Mike and Nike, but also of Josh's own textbook on computational quantum mechanics. Uh, this next one is one of my favorite pieces of art by Josh. This is an illustration of the recent uh, Gaussian Boson Sampling Quantum Advantage uh, experiment uh, in the Jusheng machine, as it's called. And it just looks amazing. It really brings to life like the wonder of these devices. Uh, and this was done really, really quickly as part of one of the, like, the tutorials in the Penny Lane website and also one of the most visited ones that we've had ever. And what I'm about to show you is never before seen. It's a world premiere of Josh's art. I think it's some of his best, and I'm sure you're all going to be amazed. This is the animated Jeff version of his artwork, right? Showing what it's like to create blog posts or demos, and also the day-to-day -day work, right? So uh, that was the beginning. It's like, okay, this is going to be Penny Lane. It's going to be a library that's going to be centered around computing gradients of quantum circuits and trainable quantum circuits. And the ball was rolling, right? The ball was rolling, and this was more and more growing and building up to a working library that people could start using and employing and applying in their research. So we reach a new stage of development, and therefore we need a new version of Nathan's face. This, for me, it's not just the Movember one. You can see how the length of the hair has changed quite a bit. This is more of a, like a trucker, rock star, country singer kind of look, right? It's one of my favorites, but not the favorite. You're going to see the favorite one. Uh, again, what a phonogenic man. It's incredible. So a new stage of development for Penny Lane. And it, it's really, in my mind, what happened was that there was already a working product. Right, a minimum viable product, like an MVP. And it was time to just grow, to improve, right? And the team was still small, and the, the momentum was only building up and beginning around Penny Lane. And, but there was a, like a better oiled and, let's say, better structured software team. And as part of the way in which the team operated, Right? It's something that's very common in the software industry, which is to do software sprints. So you have some periods of time that uh, you dedicate to building specific things that are planned. And if you thought that the 80s and 90s theme is something that's just related to Quack, it's not actually the case. Right? This has been as part of, of Penny Lane and Sandu from the beginning. So all these uh, sprints were themed around 80s and 90s pop culture. And really what happened was every sprint had a theme chosen by the, the team members. Uh, and you would then print out an image associated to the current theme, again, related to pop culture, and paste it on a cockboard that had all the, you know, uh, the tickets related to the things that we're going to be building for, uh, for Penny Lane, right? And so now is the time when I want to play a game with chat. So I've asked the moderators to help me award I'm going to show you, again, GIFs of some of the favorite themes of the past. I asked the team to, to, to remind me of the ones that they like the best. Um, and I want you in the chat, all our viewers, to guess which one it is. Whoever guesses first is going to win 10 million prestige points. 10 million prestige points. So this is really important, very high stakes. Ready to go? All right, we'll start with an easy one. This TV show features an alien life form that came to Earth and ended up in a very typical suburban family. So what is it? What's the name of the show? This actually was airing in Colombia when I was growing up there. That's right, ALF. 
I hope some people got in the chat. I'm not looking at chat right now. Another TV show. When I saw this, I had no idea. This did not make it to Colombia. But I did recognize the actor, right? It looked really familiar. And I, and, I, and I remember, oh, this is just the child version of From How I Met Your Mother, right? So does anyone know the name of this TV show? That's right, Doogie Hauser, MD. This next one, one that I remember watching uh, as a kid, I absolutely remember the iconic character of Mr. T, right? Um, Crazy Adventures. Uh, and, and again, we had, we would print this out, or I guess the team would print it out, paste it on a corkboard, and that'll be the theme, right? So this one, what is it, everyone in chat? Okay, the A team. So this is some of the TV shows. Uh, we also recently had a reference to a video game. This one should be very easy for everyone. So, like, be fast to win your prestige points. I remember playing this with my friends on a Sega. Uh, I was more of a Street Fighter fan, uh, but I remember this game. I remember the fatalities and how gruesome they looked to me uh, at that age. Uh, and so we had a, a theme named after this video game that, of course, is Mortal Kombat. Uh, and we also had uh, shared alongside it a 10 hour loop on YouTube of the main theme song. Amazing. Highly recommended. And it's not just video games, uh, it's also movies. Uh, for me, this is one of the most iconic thumbs up of all time. Um, it's, it's, it's a great movie, uh, a great performance by the uh, governor of California. And again, Hopefully, a lot of you got this very quickly. And I wonder who's winning in the prestige point. Uh, Terminator 2. So we had a sprint theme, right? A lot of the features that you see and that you enjoy from Penny Lane, some of them were made during the Terminator 2 sprint. This next one is a bit more obscure. This was a submission that I made back in the day. I was not working on Penny Lane at the time. I was working on Strawberry Fields and building the app Slayer. Shout out to Tom. And it's one of my favorite movies of that era. Uh, it's, it's, it's a movie about people that fit different stereotypes in high school and they come together, you know, after being grounded and, and find a way of becoming friends. Uh, hopefully some of you recognize it. It's The Breakfast Club. Uh, and something that I wanted to mention as well and share is that, we, so the way the team works, indeed you have these sprints and every sprint has a, a theme. But, and give me a second. There are also interregnum periods where, so this is just jargon, right? But it means there's, there's kind of a, a change uh, of project. So typically this happens around every quarter and these are special, right? So it's a shift of focus. And, and so these are not actually named after 80s and 90s pop culture references. These are named after revolutions, right? So we're gonna keep playing the same game, uh, this time related to revolutions. So you can either guess the name of the associated revolution or the revolutionary person associated to it. So we start with an easy one, uh, a shout out to Alain Delgado, who's leading the quantum chemistry revolution at Sandu. Uh, I remember even in oh, Colombia, uh, I, I think, think they, they still do. do. There's a, a university that has this person's face right there big uh, mm -hmm. in one of the big squares. So that's right, this is the Cuban revolution and Che Guevara. So we had a Cuban revolution interregnum theme uh, in the team. This one's maybe not that easy. Uh, for me, it's actually quite easy based on where I grew up. Uh, more, It's one of the revolutionary person, but there's also revolutions associated to it. Um, and particularly in a, in, in a part of the world that underwent a big change. And this is Simon Bolivar and a revolution around independence movements in South America, independence from Spain. One of the recent ones is, you may not know this, but Sanadu has always had employees from around the world, but it took a long time, a few years, to start having our first um, employees from the United States. So shout out to Christina, to Chase, and Tom Lubo, and even Diego Guala started very recently with us. And so what revolution is this one? But uh, I would like to say it's the American Revolution, right? And also the independence in the US. And of course, the images here are a reference to, to Hamilton. So what we had there was um, a theme of Hamilton. This was at the end of last year, marking the end of 2020. 
And I remember when this point was reached, I was thinking, you know, with, with, with Penny Lane and with everything that we do at Sanadu and the community, all of you that participate in this, that we have a real shot at building something extraordinary, a real shot at building the best quantum software in the world, right? And we're not throwing away that shot. We're not throwing away that shot. Yeah, we're not throwing away that shot. Yeah, we're not throwing away that shot. But we just like this country, we're young, scrappy, and hungry, and we're not throwing away that shot. All right, I don't know how many of you got that reference, but I wrapped a little bit too. Now, I'm gonna, we're nearing the end of the, uh, of the party, of the talk, and that means it's the final stage of Nathan's face. And I'm gonna do some drum roll here, because this is a masterpiece. This is gonna be a momentous, famous, all of you are gonna remember the moment that you saw this image. Here it goes, voila. The final form of Nathan Killoran. I, I'm gonna I wanna spend some time here so that we appreciate the the magnificence of this picture, right? You can guess that this occurred when Nathan's hair reached a pandemic length that was unbearable, and he decided to shave it all off. But of course, in the interest of posterity and making history, he photographed himself in this magnificent form. Right? Isn't this incredible? So, uh, what a phonogenic man. It's unbelievable. So, this is kind of the final stage. This is more or less the time that I came in, uh, helping in Penny Lane, where, where we kind of realized that th th there's still so much to improve, right? The, the, there's, there's already so much happening and so many people benefiting from the software and the realization that we have a real shot at doing something fantastic but also that the that initial scope of Penny Lane being about quantum machine learning, it, it's not the, the full picture, right? The real picture is to have a quantum software and again, a community around the product uh, of people that's thriving, but it's, it, it goes beyond, right? It's about quantum computing. It's about quantum technologies more generally, right? And so, so we've seen this meme of quantum differentiable programming, but it, I agree with this because it's simply a way of thinking about quantum computing where the future of quantum computing and the present of quantum computing is not going to be just telling the quantum computer what to do, right? We're also, as is happening in the classical side, famously with deep learning, with AI, and you know, most data scientists will tell you that the way you write software nowadays includes a component of optimizing, of training, of differentiating your computation. So, so this is a stage of improving all the capabilities, but also expanding the scope, right? And, and so that requires a bigger team, requires more expertise, requires also more ambition, right? And to fuel everything that we do, right? Uh, at Sandu, we, we use a lot of Slack. So again, I'm giving you a behind the scenes, what happens behind the scenes of everything we do. And we use Slack a lot, and Slack has this amazing feature that you can create your custom emojis. I love emojis, and I'm not the only one in the company that loves emojis. So we've created a lot of emojis that keep fueling the way that we do things and bring in that amazing energy and fun to everything that we do. So what I'm doing here is sharing some of the favorite ones. Uh, you'll see on the one corner a picture of Tom, a Sanadu man. This was an accident from trying to have a background with the Sanadu logo. So I love the effect. That's an emoji in the company. You'll see Raf laughing and looking quite professional at the bottom. This left muscle and right muscle are one of my favorites. Anytime somebody does something amazing, you can use, and we have a custom emoji for every single employee. You can bring in their custom emoji and then just add some muscle to it, right? We have Cat Jam, Timbits from Canada, a lot of stuff. So something that I wanna do as part of this party is to ask everyone in chat right now Spam your favorite Twitch emotes. I've seen you all during these past few days at Quack, using them and having fun. This is the time when I want to see it explode. Spam all your favorite emotes, and let's see it. And while you do it, I'm going to show you some of the team's favorite ones. Um, I think it was Marco Cereso that said that he doesn't want to have anything to do with the new trilogy of Star Wars. 
I have to disagree with that. BB-8 is fantastic. I love BB-8, and he's my go-to way of saying, hey, thumbs up. Uh, this chef kiss is Nathan's way of saying, great work, guys. I really like what you're doing. Uh, we have an onion for some reason. I have no idea why, but it's fantastic. I love it. Uh, this guy drinking coffee, he's actually Matt Collins. He's the lead of the chip detection team uh, on the hardware team. This is taken from a video he recorded as part of our Christmas party uh, around like this culture at Sanadu. Uh, so he also became an emoji. You see a quantum influencer uh, on the top right. Uh, uh, Boss Lightyear, uh, the GKP state. You can buy that T-shirt on the Sanadu shop. Please take a look. Uh, some of the other favorites. These were actually like from the team, the software team in particular. Uh, everyone loves Party Parrots. We have literally all the Party Parrots available. Uh, there's even a Nathan Party Parrot. I told you this guy's photogenic. Work from home, ultra fast parrot. Shout out to Chase. Josh's favorite, Squid, which is actually, as you know, uh, a Twitch emote. Fidget spinner, you name it. Right? I actually love the Thor ones because you can put cool things uh, inside. And this is how things look like. Finally, you see this slinky kind of moving around? The, there's a story behind this. There was once a party at Sanadu, like a company party, Christmas party, I believe, where we went to this place called The Rec Room in Toronto, where you can play arcade games, win some tickets, some virtual tickets, and exchange them for some prices. And they were really expensive. So we realized that they had some slinkies, like this one that you see here. And they were super, super cheap, like 20 tickets each. So we got a bunch of them and gave it to all the employees at the time. We were maybe 15 or so. And the idea, of course, is that Sanadu is a photonic quantum computing company. And optical modes are just quantum harmonic oscillators, like the Slinky. And at some point, we got a giant Slinky. And when we started having so many users and questions that it really necessitated people to jump in and help, um, we decided to create um, like a special designation to having somebody dedicated during periods of time in helping answering questions. So every one of you that uses the Slack and San, uh, the San Andreas Slack that uses the discussion forum, and you see a lot of people, members of the team replying, what we do is we select teams of a few people and they're designated to answer all the questions during some time. And those people are called hugs. So you're hugs, people are hugs. And that's an acronym for the holder of the giant slinky. Because besides the small slinkies that we all got, we bought a big rainbow beautiful one. And so whoever was in charge of replying to questions was holding the giant slinky. So everyone that helps is a hug, a holder of the giant slinky. Uh, this is reaching the end of my talk. Let's take a look at this masterpiece uh, once more. Uh, it, it's really... I, I, I don't get tired <laughs> of looking at this. Okay, that, that's the, sorry, Nathan. This is the end of my talk. I, I, I told you previously that this was not a serious talk. I had a slide saying that this is not a serious talk, but I, I actually don't believe that. I, I believe that what just happened was crazy and chaotic and, and, and strange as it was, maybe cringy. Uh, was actually a very serious talk. And, and the way that I understand this is a lot of people have the connotation, or the word has, the, the word serious has the connotation of, of being like this, right? We're very serious. And this is a very serious matter. And when you view it that way, it's almost as if, as if being serious is incompatible with having fun, right? So I'm going to share with you one final story. Uh, Christian Wheatbrook, again, CEO of Sanadu, he, he once told me over a chat that his main goal, right? And I may be paraphrasing, but his main goal uh, with building this company is that all of us working here and all of you that are part of the community uh, would look back at this time in our life and view it as the best time of our lives. And, and that actually moved me a lot because it resonates so much with my own philosophy of how to do things. And so, so what does it mean to look back at this time as the best time? And, and of, of course, course, this is in a professional, professional context. And to me, this means two things. It means doing absolutely killer work, right? Building meaningful, fantastic technologies, pushing the frontiers of science, of technology, of knowledge, 
been working really hard to achieve that with, with passion, with integrity, with dedication, but also enjoying the process when you do so, right? And so that's what it means for this to be like the best version of life that you can have of professional life. So, so to me, the word serious means caring a lot. It doesn't mean having a straight face. It means caring. And being serious about something takes different forms depending on what you're serious about. And what, what I hope you have all shared during Quack uh, in this edition is that everyone in the team is very serious about building a thriving community and in particular about creating an event where not only you learn and you get inspiration and you like improve your skills and become better, but where you enjoy the time in doing so. And that's the reason that I embarrass myself telling jokes and singing some songs in the ukulele. And when Nathan shared those pictures of himself with me, it's because we are very serious about all of you enjoying the event. Thank you very much. Juan Miguel, I am truly speechless, which is not something I can say often. Uh, still fully believe you do not understand the concept of a joke. And that was a terrific presentation. I'm sure uh, people laughed at that. I'm sure they always do. It's a minority of people, but they laugh at my jokes. I, 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 I was losing my mind. Uh, it was, <laughs> uh, only one thing left to do uh, today. Uh, we, of course, tonight will have a rerun of all the greatest hits from today. I'm sure your talk will make it into that. Uh, but before that, uh, we still have a meme competition to judge. So I'm going to ask Paul to actually pull up uh, the first meme for us. Uh, we will serve as maybe the explainers. Uh, just take a look, give our thoughts on it. And then what we'll do is actually let uh, the chat vote on all these memes and we'll pick pick our winner. So Juan Miguel, what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, OK, it's a bit small, but let me see. Uh, I remember this one. It's a good one. It's a good one. Am I supposed to be commenting on all the? <laughs> that, that's the, the point. Okay. I, I mean, yeah, I, I enjoy this one. You know, we, we can't do much. Uh, we love the idea of our quantum networks outperforming classical, but you have to compare apples to apples. So, if I'm a big fan of the office. I'm a big fan of the office. Uh, it's a good example of laughing and having a good time. They they really are experts in that show. It's all good. Right. It's good. Seven point five out of ten. Awesome. Let's move it up to the to the current champion, which is going to hold it in the spot, and we're going to bring in the challenger. Uh, so let's see what the the challenger is. This is one of my favorites. I I can definitely identify with this. You always find the new shiny object. All your current projects are on the shelf. I actually think I have like twenty Raspberry Pis over my shoulder of incomplete wow. projects. Um, so so this one this one is great. So we'll put it out to the audience. Uh, is it going to be champion or challenger in this case? Uh, and we'll do an actual uh, a poll if the, the mods can make that happen. It's a good one. But the this is a bit of a cliche, this meme, in my opinion. That'll be my, my take on it. Really? Yeah. What's the name of this meme? The, the boyfriend looking in the back? It, it has a name. Distracted boyfriend? That one. Yeah. Well, I, I'm a harsh judge, aren't I? Maybe I should relax a bit. You are. Great memes, everyone. <laughs> Keep them coming. Uh, this is going to be a while. I'm, I'm a little worried on how long this is going to take. So uh, I'll, I'll rely on Tim to let us know who the winner is, either in the Slack channel or directly in the chat. Juan well, Miguel, everybody was enthralled with your ukulele playing, but they were freaked out by how thin your ukulele is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, I can tell you a story about the ukulele. It's a very different one. Uh, it's the reason that I got it. It's actually a souvenir from Hawaii. And it, it's way too expensive for a ukulele. Uh, I won't uh, reveal the exact price. But it's really like an electric guitar looking, isn't it? The right. Price. And so that's the reason that I got it. Uh, it's really good. Uh, I love this. All right. Champion it is. It looks like you, you were right. Uh, this is a bit of a cliche. Uh, so we're going to move on to the next challenger. All right. Well, if Paul can get it keyed up. I like giving Paul a hard time. Being an admin in the back end is actually super hard work. 
Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> This one, I, I don't actually like as a as a meme, but I'm absolutely going to use this every time I need to explain <laughs> quantum computing to anyone. Uh, I love this one. I I never did this like in the cinema, but I remember a cousin of mine would just do an absolutely insane cocktail of all the different sodas, where even if they were not black, even if they did not include Coke, it would always be black at some point. For me, I did the same thing, and it would always end up tasting like gummy bears, no matter what you did. Yeah, the sugar. Yeah. Just the sugar. Yeah. You're going to play some other song, Juan Miguel, while we wait for the results of, of just the... In the background, just in the background, play some chords. Something that I think we're missing is taking a look at Paul's studio. I think uh, our audience have not has not been able to marvel at the setup at his home. Maybe we'll yeah. share. It. Maybe we, we, I'll, I'll take a screenshot right now and maybe share it on social media. How about that? That sounds like a wonderful idea. Yeah, Paul is not complaining, so I'll do it. Yeah, I want to have a, a cribs version of uh, for for virtual meetings for basically <laughs> behind the camera. That's what everyone, that's what you're seeing right now on the call. This is behind the camera. So yeah. you don't have to see me with the brick wall behind me. <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> All right, champion takes it again. Nobody likes a challenger. Oh wow! Little office. Oh wait, wait, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Hang on. Looks like champion is winning. Challenger wins ten to eight. So we got a new. Uh, we got a new champion. Uh, once again, these are actual memes submitted by people on Twitter. Uh, you can see the uh, the actual tweet addresses underneath there, uh, and our winner overall will get a sweet uh, Q hack. Uh, uh, my package. The, the, this one, this one, I do love as well. I know this is uh, Nathan, Nathan's favorite. So, in case you don't know, uh, Nathan is our head of software, one of the kind of original minds of of Xanadu, has been here from very early days, uh, and I know that he loves this one. Uh, I, I definitely feel this way when somebody tries to walk me through some of the latest research. Juan Miguel, what are your thoughts? I mean, it's. I've seen this, uh, you know, I've been doing research since I started my PhD, I would say, and I've seen different stages of like good ideas and good, like new research trends that still attract a lot of people. And so, so you do have situations where you have amazing work being done consistently, but also surrounded by a lot of people jumping in and creating a bit of noise around it. Right. So, so I, I mean, I got a good chuckle out of this one, and I see where it's coming from, but there's a lot of gems in that dump, let me tell you. And the only problem is you actually got to go diving for them to find them. <laughs> That's right. They're not always the ones sitting on top. So so may, maybe a, a real motivation to our uh, actual uh, hackathon participants. Don't get discouraged. Keep on going. Uh, looking at uh, the results, champion wins. Next one, ball. Right. We are moving through these quickly. Uh, this one is from one of our speakers. I don't know if this one qualifies. This was included even in a talk. Paul, next one. We're going to disqualify. <laughs> yeah. uh. Oh, Bernie. Oh, Bernie, Bernie. Once again, this is another one we're going to disqualify. I love the Bernie name. Uh, uh, All right. I'm calling it out. I'm calling it out. This was my favorite that I saw. Was it? This was, oh, I love this one. I had never seen the meme itself, and I think it was just like spot on. Like it resonated. So I'm not sure if everyone can read it, but on the bottom, it's basic programming, then linear algebra, then machine learning, uh, then <laughs> quantum mechanics, and then finally quantum machine learning. And what I love about Penny Lane is it allows you to do exactly this: just jump right into tutorials and start. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Uh, and and there's truth to it, right? Because in 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 doing good research, you you have to reach this balance between moving fast but also understanding concepts really well, right? So so what this kid is attempting to do, which is maybe move a bit too fast, you, you do have to do it to some extent, right? So maybe maybe four steps is too much, but sometimes you, know, you want to move in two or three steps. <laughs> it is a blowout, Juan Miguel. It is a complete blowout. Not a single vote. Oh, one vote now for the champion. Uh, so challenge. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. I approve. We are five. That's a good one. Let's see who's next. I'm always suspicious of who the next one is going to be. You know what? This one I'm going to need you to explain to me, Juan Miguel. This is what this is what I know. Josh Isaac absolutely loves, mainly based on the expression of the last bird. But I think for my sake, for Paul's sake, for I'm sure some of our uh, listeners' sake, you're gonna have to explain it. Yeah. So the the first bird, right, in in, in the pink uh, thought bubble or speech bubble, I guess, is saying like, "Hey, my my quantum state is perfect. It's just a beautiful, pure state, right?" And then the other, I guess, crow bird is saying, "Ah, ah no, you have noise." Right? So those are cross operators, if I'm not mistaken. Your, your state is not so nice. And the bird is like, okay, okay, okay. It's like, oh no, actually, it's still the crowd saying, right? It's saying like, you know, you you have some noise. You have this identity noise coming in. And the bird is like, okay, I'll, I accept it, but it's just like so small. So it's a very clever take on, on you know, to what extent do we actually include noise in our... Uh, in our models, in our theory, and to what extent we kind of pretend it's not so important to be able to actually move forward, right? So uh, I think it's a clever take. It's maybe not the most hilarious one. I think if, if you have to think too much about a joke, but it's a very clever take on a, an important topic of, of all of quantum computing. Right? Everyone agrees with you. The the champion champion keeps it. All right. The, the kid who jumped up the stairs is holding top spot. Next. Good job, Next uh, that, that's what I love. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. Anything with uh, doggos. Exactly. Uh, you, you, get, you get immediate points for use of doggos. Yeah. So let, let, let's put it out to the audience. I know you're a uh, fur baby parent yourself now. And, uh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, we adopted a dog like two months ago or so. Yeah. We will see. It's quite the ride. I, I feel this was Nathan. This was Nathan and Maria brainstorming in the early days. <laughs> We will see, yeah, like, we'll see where this comes out. I have a feeling the, uh, the the champion will keep this one as well. Champion champion stays on top. So we're gonna keep keep on rolling. We have a lot of things to get through. Uh, Whatever happens with the champion has won already a lot of battles. This is legitimately the only <laughs> all of these that made me laugh out loud. <laughs> uh, this is I, I saw it for the first time last night. And I spent a good 15 minutes laughing at it. Uh, but Juan Miguel, maybe for everyone's sake, explain it. Explain it to us. Give us the expert opinion on it. Yeah. So what happens when you apply a Hadamard gate on a qubit? You get a superposition of 0 and 1. What happens when you do a C0 gate between that? You create the state 0, 0 plus 1, 1. You know, multiply by 1 over the square root of 2. This is a Bell state. And what happens if you were to measure the state? You just figure out, you know, what state are you in? ask the question to the state, then you'll get a different answer with different probabilities, right? And so this is illustrating this with an amazing Scooby-Doo meme. Let's see who's hiding behind, right? And well, it depends. <laughs> you do it different times and you'll get different answers. Well, uh, you, don't, you don't really need the entanglement here, right? Um, so, so minus points for that. You could do it with a single qubit, this meme, but still pretty good. Well, good news, the challenger takes it. So uh, wow. throw the kid on the stairs. Juan Miguel, your favorite is gone. Uh, my favorite, yeah. second only to the meme I submitted is, is gone. <laughs> this one's a classic. Uh, I don't think this one requires much explaining. Uh, of course, Penny Lane has ten, tons and tons of great machine learning or quantum machine learning tutorials. Uh, it's always super fun to go and, and check out what Either the, the team has put up or the community has submitted. Uh, highly encourage you to do it. But uh, I definitely feel definitely not Netflix, NBA, stand up or comedy. It's more like the work I should be doing, the cleaning I should be doing. Uh, yeah, for, for some people, it's the other way around, right? <laughs> uh, so let's, see. Well, uh, let's see what Tim, who's running uh, all the magic in the background, says champion stays. I completely agree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did this what I do like? Um, again, maybe while we wait for the story to roll in, uh, Juan Miguel, you wanna wanna walk us through? Yeah. Okay. My take on it, right? It's um, actually I think there's a lesson 
here for, for all the researchers. Sometimes it's something that I've learned is that there's a difference between selling your work and understanding why your work is important, right? So what is this meme saying? It's like if you if you have a trainable circuit where the gate parameters are variable, you could call it a, vari a variational quantum circuit, right? And whatever, <laughs> but call that a quantum neural network, right? And all of a sudden, it's like, wow, neural networks, but quantum, and get a lot of more interest, right? It's the same thing. It's a rebranding, right? So that's where the joke lies in my in my mind. But there's actually a lesson there, right? Because if for example, it may not be obvious to to make the connection that the moment that you make a circuit trainable, right, there may be some insights you can get from machine learning, from neural networks that can help you in whatever it is that you were doing, right? So uh, it's funny because it's, you know, it, it's hype and it's like overselling. But I, I do think there's a lesson in understanding the, the worth uh, of your of your work and why it's important. Awesome. Emulsifier definitely is getting angry about the fact that they're not neural networks. Uh, but <laughs> Champion takes it by, by just a hair. So we'll move on to the next one. Good. Good. I like Champion better. Oh, so these, these <laughs> I hope both of them make it. These are my favorite things to come out. So of course, uh, people who are doing the hackathon know uh, we had some challenges with our uh, grading server uh, right off the bat. Um, on the first day, big shout out to Alberto Fumagalli, who uh, definitely dove in head first in order to try to get all those problems resolved. Uh, but, but this is perfect. I love the idea uh, of this one. Um, and I'm not sure, Paul, if the next one is, is similar as well. Uh, but uh, I love the fact that QHack itself generated memes, not intentionally, but more organically. That's right. And you know, there's this is a Japanese dog right in the meme, right? A Shiba. And the um, there's there's a Japanese concept of wabi sabi. I don't know how many of you know this, which means beauty in imperfection. And I think that's what we achieved. All the things that were imperfect in the event just made it more beautiful. And, and so this meme captures that really well. So I approve. This is a very good one. And and the, the choice of swag is on point. I, I do like I do like that. So it looks like the challenger is winning. Just waiting for the final count right now. I see that Tim is typing. I think it's going to be pretty close. Um, yeah, there's another one I know. Uh, challenger takes it by just a hair. So we, we have a new champion. Um, Crazy. There's one more of these. Um, I'm not sure if I'll actually have it or see it, but uh, it, it's much, yeah, this one. Much more specific. <laughs> Five or two. Doesn't have the, doesn't have the swag, but I feel that that the joke is on point, and it's definitely one of those you had to be there to get it things. Uh, yeah, if you weren't part of QHack, you you wouldn't you wouldn't think this is funny at all. But we'll let the uh, the viewers vote, uh, see where we come out. Um, just just let everyone know this is a bit of a tradition at Xanadu uh, Quantum Well Fridays usually 5 p.m. on a Friday uh, when we're in the office. It was the time to have a little bit of ridiculous fun. Now that we're remote, that's right, ping pong, uh, a, a pint or two, uh, just you know the traditional way uh, to, to relax. And now that we're remote, it usually devolves to a scribble game um, online. And Challenger apparently blew it out of the water. <laughs> Everyone. You see, when... when, when uh... When art resonates with you as a human being, it's more meaningful. And I think this is what's happening with everyone in the chat. Yeah, I agree. It strikes a chord. How about your... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can in chat. Like, oh, I love this. If, if he is, yeah. can we please make sure that everyone tweets this at Guillaume? So, <laughs> yes. uh, Quantum Bird is his Twitter handle. I'm not sure if we can throw it up. Uh, but of course, he he threw up uh, uh, access to to the clock service for our QHack participants. Uh, I I do like this. Quack, quack. He's a ref. Come on. I, I can't do it while we got it. Speak up, quack. Okay. Uh, it actually. Looks for, 
Guillaume, if you're watching, if you're watching, like consider wearing a suit. It really looks good on you. Ooh, it's a close one. Tim, Tim is saying we have to wait for the final count to come in. There's going to be a recount here. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, just to kind of give an update, apparently 44 teams have completed the full hackathon. So remember, there's 50 spots for the uh, uh, access to the FOC devices, uh, so the TPUs for quantum simulation. There's 80 spots for uh, AWS credits. So still lots lots to compete with. Uh, 331, sorry, 332 teams uh, with actual submissions, correct submissions. Challenger takes it by just a bit. I am I am shocked. Wow. I am absolutely shocked. I have to say, I think that the memes that come at the end have a uh, an edge. You, you know what? It was it was either this or a bracket system, and if we did a bracket system, we'd be here forever. That's that right. it. We have a meme champion. It is right. you, know, you know what? I think it's appropriate. It is appropriate. <laughs> The meme champion is has a meme that it has Guillaume Bird in it. Um, uh, Quantum Bird, we should all tweet it at him, let him know that he was immortalized as the uh, champion winning meme. Awesome. I, I think that honestly concludes our day. Juan Miguel, uh, any final closing remarks from your side? Just uh, a big thank you to everyone that participated. There's there's so many people uh, in the back from from Sanadu team, and I won't name them all, but you know who you are, of course. It's it, there was so much work to make this event happen. I contributed a little bit, but really a small drop in a big ocean of effort. Uh, so congrats to everyone and all of you that participated, that like spoke here, that were active in chat. Thank you so much. Like, like I mentioned, I, I, I do view what we're trying to do as building a community around the technology, but uh, there's this human component that's very important. And so I hope you all enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to what you're all going to be building next week. I hope you all kill it and do something fantastic. Yeah, so from my side, just a reminder, it, it, it's not over. Uh, there's still gonna be a talk from AWS that's gonna walk you through um, the you know, basics of how to get up and running on Bracket so you can leverage those credits for your uh, hackathon. Um, there's also the late night stream session tonight where uh, yeah. we're going to replay some of the best things. Uh, super low key chat. If you want to yeah. join him, uh, I'll probably be there. It's Highly recommended. Going to be a great time. Also, a shout out to all our sponsors one more time. Uh, Paul, if you don't mind throwing up um, the, the logos up there. Uh, not only the people provide prizes uh, for, you know, all, all the great participants, uh, also uh, they contributed their time and effort in making sure that those questions were available, making sure that uh, they were helping moderate the sessions and provide uh, explanations and clarifications uh, within uh, Dom Judge. Um, so really fantastic work. And really also want to give a shout out to all the participants um you know it's amazing that we had over 300 teams that submitted correct answers to the hackathon um we really were completely blown away by the amount of uh effort and support that you all put into it um i cannot believe that 44 teams have run the the full hackathon uh this is not something that we thought would happen it, it's it's completely unbelievable um, and yeah, really looking forward to what you can do. So big thanks to everyone. Uh, we'll see you at nine o'clock tonight uh, for the restreams or next week for the remainder of the hackathon and the uh, AWS tutorial session. Thank you so much. And with that, we'll, we'll sign off. Have a great night. Thank you.